Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I am officially back from my break off of YouTube and ready to start providing you guys with tons of new content. In case you haven't seen my community post or perhaps you're new here, I recently took a break off of making videos for my YouTube channel so that I could focus on the final build up to my wedding. So for my first video back today, I'm well prepared with my bridal t-shirt, my brand new piece of ring bling, my wedding band, and my bridal lipstick. And I'm all ready today to tell you guys all about my wedding day. I have several videos planned that are going to like cover different aspects of my wedding. So today we're just going to do a bit of a story time kind of video about the actual wedding day. And then I will have more detail at the end about the different videos that I'm going to be putting out soon. And after that, we are going to roll back to our regularly scheduled archeology span content. Um, <clears throat> I have, uh, for the video today, I'm going to be mostly talking about my wedding and then I also have some of my wedding photos that I'm going to add into the video as well as a couple personal videos that I took on the day. I didn't actually take that much and it was more towards the morning. Uh, I do have a professional wedding video that was made for my wedding, but I'm going to keep that private. I'm not going to put it all over my YouTube channel. Uh, it is absolutely fantastic and I love it but I'm just kind of saving that for me and my family and friends. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and to follow me on Instagram, where I have been active the whole time that I've been off and I've got a lot of extra little content and tidbits that I don't necessarily get to showcase on this channel. The link to that is in the description box below. So as you will have seen from the thumbnail for this video and the title of this video, I had an absolutely fairy tale dream wedding in a castle in Scotland where I live. For, this actually was a dream of mine ever since I first came to Scotland on a visit when I was like 10 or 11 years old and we went to go see Stirling Castle. Since then I always wanted to get married in a castle, preferably in Scotland. It may or may not be one of the reasons why I moved here. <laughs> The vast majority of the wedding venues that we looked at were castles. The venue that we ended up getting married at is called Winton Castle, and it is located in Pencaitland, which is a small village in the area of East Lothian, which basically is about a 30 minute drive east of Edinburgh. It is still owned as a private home, but it also operates at the same time as an exclusive events venue. So basically people can rent it out for things like weddings or corporate events. The family that owns the castle does live there uh, in a kind of like separated off part of the castle. And then the kind of main bit is what gets used for the events and with that they also have eight bedrooms within the castle that people can sleep in if they are having an event there. It is technically called Winton House but we call it Winton Castle because I mean you look at it it is a castle. There was originally an actual castle on the site was which was built in the 1480s by the Seton family who are perhaps most famous for one of their daughters of the family, Mary Seton, who was one of the four ladies in waiting for Mary Queen of Scots, also known as the Four Marys, because they shared the same first name as her. During the War of the Rough Wooing, it is a thing, in 1544, it was actually completely destroyed. A while later, the family, the Seton family then decided to rebuild the castle, but instead of its purpose being defense, it was more palatial in its style. And for this rebuild, they contracted the master mason of the king, whose name is William Wallace. It's not the same as the other William the Wallace, they are different. He is the one who's responsible for the very famous design of the chimneys at the castle. They're very unique. I will put a picture here. My husband uh, is actually slightly obsessed with the chimneys. We did go get pictures of them. And uh, he's also responsible for a lot of the, the what you see in the castle today, including their very like ornate and beautiful ceilings, which you will see in some of the other pictures that I'll put up here. This rebuilding was done in the 1600s. At a later point in time, the Setons lost the ownership of the castle primarily because they were affiliated with Bonnie Prince Charlie in the Jacobite Risings and eventually it settled with the family that now owns it today which is the Ogilvies. In modern day it is considered to be a masterpiece of Scottish Renaissance architecture. It contains really ornate and intricate plaster ceilings, a lot of beautiful furniture and family treasures as well as many paintings by famous Scottish painters. At various points in its history it has hosted royalties 
so Charles I and II are said to have stayed there, and Bonnie Prince Charlie during his rebellion camped on the estate. So I don't know if that means that he actually stayed in the castle, I don't remember that part of the tour or not, but he is affiliated with the house. I found Winton after a very long search when I started wedding planning. I think I sent emails to over 30 venues asking for brochures and prices, etc. And we had actually gone to see four other venues and we had one that was kind of in the lead, but it had a couple things about it, the way it was set up that were making us hesitate. And then I came across this place in a Google search when I just searched like, castles or like wedding castles in Google Maps and this place popped up and when we went to go see it it immediately became our first choice. My partner who unlike myself did not feel particularly strongly about getting married in a castle when we left the viewing was like yep that's definitely the place that we should get married in. The things that we liked about it were the fact that everything happens inside of the castle for weddings of a certain size. Obviously, if you have a huge wedding, you might have to go on a marquee outside, but you can have the ceremony, the dinner, the dancing, everything inside the castle. Nobody has to go outside at any point. And all of the main wedding activities all happen on one floor, which is really good for people with like accessibility issues. And it was, beautifully decorated, as you will see. It was just like the perfect place. We got to stay in a four poster bed in a bridal suite, like it was fantastic. So anyway, we chose to get married in February because it is a cheaper time of year to get married and we did get a winter wedding package. So it meant that our wedding was less expensive uh, because we were getting married in the off season. And we didn't have like a particular date that we were attached to for getting married. It was more like what's going to be the most value for the least amount of money and that's how it kind of worked out for us which was great like i said we really liked that you could do everything indoors and i am not particularly attached to the idea of an outdoor wedding in scotland it is highly likely to be raining cold or bug infested at pretty much any time of the year if you're in the winter it's probably cold dark and rainy in the summer it's probably it still potentially rainy and cold, and or if it's nice out, you're probably gonna get eaten alive by midges. So there really isn't an ideal time of year here, in my opinion, to get married outdoors. So that's why I really liked that we could do everything indoors at this place. I will also say that I initially campaigned to get married in February 2021, and my partner put his foot down and insisted that we wait until 2022 just to be able to save up more money for the wedding so we could get all the things that we wanted to have without having to go into debt for the wedding. Retrospectively, that was 100% the right choice. I might not have felt like that at the time, but we actually ended up signing our agreement for our date on our wedding about a week before everything happened with the COVID-19 pandemic. And we did not have to move our date for our wedding. And thankfully it meant that we were ahead enough of the game that for a lot of stuff, especially for the venue, we didn't end up having to compete with a lot of other people who were trying to rearrange their wedding after it got canceled. The night before our wedding, uh, we had what I called a welcome dinner instead of a rehearsal dinner because we had quite a few international guests coming over from Canada or from farther away in the UK. And you know, you never get enough time to see everyone at your wedding. So we wanted to have a chance to kind of see all of them. So we went to one of our favorite restaurants in Edinburgh and saw everyone, after which point we split. My husband went back to our flat in Edinburgh uh, to stay there for the night with the partner of my maid of honor as they were staying with us and my parents and my maid of honor and I then took a rented car out to a premier inn which is just like a pretty bog standard hotel chain over here in the UK which was about a 10 minute drive from the venue and we stayed there the night before. Uh, we did this because I just didn't want to have to wake up on the morning of my wedding and drive across Edinburgh traffic. I just wanted it to be like, I get up, I have breakfast and I go there and it's quick, done, easy. Especially because as a bride, you tend to get up a lot earlier in the morning because you have a lot more things that have to be done, re, hair, makeup, etc., getting ready. As many other brides I'm sure will attest, I did not sleep very well the night before, despite the fact that I took a herbal sleeping pill, which had helped me go to sleep before but I was just 
too anxious and excited. I think I only slept maybe three or four hours total. When I got up in the morning at about 7.30, my parents, my maid of honor and I, we all went to have a cooked breakfast in the hotel, which was uh, included, which was really good and definitely something I recommend doing. Make sure you have breakfast on the morning of your wedding and fill your stomach. I actually didn't even have coffee because I woke up on the morning of my wedding and for the first time in the whole process I felt really nervous so I had like butterflies in my stomach and I just had so much adrenaline that I was just like I do not need to add anything more to my system to keep me awake at this moment in time. <laughs> Once we finished our breakfast, we then packed up our car and went to Winton. So we were really lucky in that this place is just absolutely fantastic. And so they let us actually drop off the majority of our wedding stuff a couple days before. So this is like my dress, all of our decorations, etc. So all we really had to bring on the day of was our overnight bag. And when we got there, everything was already set up. So the wedding coordinator for the venue greeted us at the door. She's fantastic. Her name is Faye. Faye, if you're watching this, I love you. <laughs> she made my life so much easier. She showed us around the place to show us how everything was set up and make sure that it was all to my satisfaction, which it was. It, they did a great job. And then we all went up to our rooms because a select few of us were staying in the castle overnight. I went up to the bridal suite, which was, oh, I wish that I could stay there all the time. I have a video here that I took of the morning of the wedding when I got to the bridal suite. Contact with yeah. Is that the one the it's not a... <laughs> you know? um, so I had it way back in July, I started July, but I am type 1 diabetic, so I have had both my drugs, but... In itself, the bedroom is fantastic, four poster bed, everything you could ask for, but the bathroom, guys. The bathroom was amazing. Unfortunately, I did not get to use the bath, which I really would have liked to, but instead on the morning, I definitely didn't shower as soon as I got up because I wanted to be able to shower in this really big fancy bathroom that we had. So that was the first thing I did when I got there. I had a shower and did all of my like lotions and potions. Uh, at about nine o'clock, the hairdresser arrived and then around 10, shortly afterwards was the makeup lady. I had a very small bridal party. I had a maid of honor who's been my best friend since I was three. And then I had my mom who was getting her hair and makeup done. And then I also had a flower girl and a ring bearer who we called ring security, who are my husband's niece and nephew. They got ready at home. So it, on the morning of it was essentially me, my best friend and my mom that just needed to get ready. I had another friend as well who told me she would pay extra for my hairdresser to do her hair. So she kind of joined us as well because she was also staying in the castle. So it was actually really nice to have a smaller bridal party because it meant that we weren't really stressed in terms of getting ready. I had brought some champagne and orange juice, so we had some mimosas and it was just kind of chill. There wasn't like a big rush. Everyone was getting everything done. Various things started arriving like my flowers. So I think I finished hair and makeup around 12 o'clock. I really don't know exact times for a lot of this stuff because I just lost all concept of time on the day of my wedding because this is not exactly the most fashionable accessory <laughs> for a wedding and I didn't think to put it in my pocket which I really should have done retrospectively but oh well. So my photographer arrived uh, we had paid him extra to come a little bit early so that he could get some before wedding shots so we then set about getting the room set up so that he could take photos of my dress hanging from the four poster bed take some photos of my shoes the bouquets the rings etc and then after he kind of got all of those shots we banished him to the bathroom while I got in to my dress. So I didn't do the full set of something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue on my wedding. I had everything except something borrowed. In addition to my dress, I wore a set of emerald jewelry, which was gifted to me by my mom. It was a set that she'd had for a very long time. And then I had a tiara that I had bought and a uh, like short veil as well. So I think it was about elbow length, roughly. I got all dressed up and all of my finery 
we got a couple pictures of my mom like pretending to do the buttons up on the back of my dress before my maid of honor came in with a crochet hook and did it instead and then my mom left to go get my brother and my dad so that we could have a bit of a first look moment before we all went downstairs this would have been about one o'clock i think so while my mom was off fetching my dad and my brother and i was standing there in like all my finery and we were waiting for them that's the moment where again like i started to feel really nervous they had kind of gone away the nurse had gone away while i was getting ready but then once i had like kind of a moment to breathe i was like oh my god i'm getting married i'm about to be the center of attention and like i started tearing up and so my maid of honor and my uh, friend came in with the assist and told me some jokes to kind of like calm me down a bit and then my dad and my brother came in and they saw me and the whole family cried, everyone in the room cried, it was very sentimental. I managed to not smudge my wake makeup, thankfully. Once we were all ready to go, we then went down the staircase into the library, which was right next to the drawing room, which is where we were getting married. So we just kind of chilled back there for a little bit with the rest of the bridal party who was all ready and the piper. So when the ceremony started, Everyone else went into classical music, but then when my dad and I came in, we got piped in by a bagpiper, which is a very traditional Scottish thing to do. And luckily for us, one of our very good friends is a bagpiper. So he piped my dad and I down the aisle, which is a really special moment for, for both of us. My dad is like incredibly proud of our Scottish heritage so to have that was really special for me and for him. My husband was uh, waiting for me looking very calm, cool, collected and dashing in his kilt outfit with his fly plaid. Our ceremony was done by a celebrant so it was non-religious and we also changed a couple things about it to try and make it as gender neutral as possible as in like I didn't get asked if I was being given away by my dad because my husband actually really disliked the idea that I'm a piece of property that's being handed over so we changed the wording of some stuff and let our celebrant kind of like fill things in we chose our own vows it wasn't quite a civil service but it also wasn't a religious service it was uh, somewhere in between which I thought worked really well it was a nice mix of humor and sentiment and it lasted about a half hour and obviously it also you know got the key thing done which was us getting married and signing a legal document tying ourselves together in perpetuity we both managed to say all of our lines right without mixing up or saying the wrong name but um dum -tsh. And then once we finished, we exited with the best man, the maid of honor and the piper into the library to have a moment to ourselves. The guests went out a different exit to the room to where we were having our cocktail hour. And so we got a private moment in the library with some champagne and canapes, which were absolutely delicious. Next, we went into the Octagon Hall of Winton House, which is where we were having our cocktail reception and immediately started off by cutting our cake which was done so with an antique sword provided by the venue. I was very happy to be able to do this. I was definitely the one that like immediately I was like, ah, sword, yes. And I was just like, I definitely have some quite sketchy looking photos of me looking not quite murderous, but like definitely way too excited to be holding a sword. And my husband's just kind of standing there like, okay. <laughs> Our cake that we had was a kind of custom cake. So it is my favorite type of cake which is called a Bienenstich in German. It translates to English as beasting cake. Ours is not exactly a traditional one, but basically what it boils down to is a couple layers of vanilla sponge with a kind of like vanilla custardy creme patisserie filling. And then on the very top, you have a layer of almonds caramelized in honey. So it is absolutely delicious. The lady that made our cake had never made this type of cake before. She made it for our tasting, but yeah, it's not a typical cake and it was very delicious. And I, I'm very, very glad that I insisted on getting that. After that, it was then on to photos. So this is kind of a, a switch around from the way a lot of Canadian weddings happen where you do all the photos in the day and then you go get married and have the reception right after. A Scottish wedding is like an all day event. So our ceremony started at 1.30. <laughs> and we went through the whole day until midnight slash one o'clock. So yeah, it's definitely a marathon, not a sprint <laughs> at a Scottish wedding. Contrary to uh, the weather immediately prior to our wedding, it was an absolutely beautiful, bonny, sunny Scottish winter day. So we decided to have the photos 
a lot of the photos done outside because the weather was obliging. It was quite chilly. I definitely went numb at one point. I stopped feeling the cold, but again, there's just so much adrenaline. It doesn't really matter. Uh, we had all the group photos done outside the castle and then once we finished the big photo with everybody we started sending people inside and then taking them out for more smaller group photos uh, during which time they all had more cocktails as a part of the cocktail hour. At 3 p.m. we sent all of our guests into the dining room for a pub quiz. So as I said a Scottish wedding is like a bit of a marathon and there's always a really awkward bit where between the cocktail hour and dinner the bride and groom are taking photos and the guests are just kind of like milling around trying to make more small talk because so because my husband and I go to a pub quiz every week and have been doing so for about six or seven years we thought a fun way to help entertain the guests in this kind of bit in between would be to have a pub quiz where everybody would have their team would be preset as their table that they're sitting in at the dinner and then this would also serve as a really good way to ice break for the guests because in a way that you don't really think about until you have a wedding you've got all of these people coming that you know but they don't know each other a lot of the time <laughs> So it's a really great way to force people to kind of talk and work together. And the guy who does our pub quiz that we go to every week generously agreed to come out to our wedding and do a pub quiz for us at the wedding, which was really great. We had him do a, a round on Friends because my name's Rachel, my husband's name is Ross. And I love Friends, he's not that fussed. And then we also did a picture round where I had gotten photos of us as, as babies and then people had to figure out like if, if it was Ross or Rachel when we were kids. So it was kind of a nice way to tie us into it and keep everyone entertained while we were still going to do many, many, many more photos. We went back into the castle. We were very lucky in that we had asked in advance and gotten permission to go up to the roof to take some shots. And this was almost entirely because my husband wanted to have pictures with the famous chimneys that I mentioned earlier. He finds them fascinating. You will not see probably anything like them elsewhere in Scotland or perhaps the UK. It was really great that we got to go up there and we it was just us the best man, the maid of honor, and then the wedding coordinator, the videographer, and the photographer. So once we did that, we also ended up going down to the loch. So there's a small loch behind the castle, and you would go to have photos there anyway, but my dad <laughs> had asked my new father-in-law to bring along some fishing rods. So we ended up getting some faux fishing photos <laughs> at the wedding of each of us trying to fish with our dad entirely posed like we did not catch anything quite funny though and then we got some really nice romantic photos of the two of us on the little dock that that goes out from the lock i definitely got dock sludge on my dress at that point but luckily we had a little bit of time to go upstairs and it ended up washing out when we just put it underwater in the sink so the dress wasn't ruined so that was good I was very grateful for that. By the time that we finished with the photos, it was time for dinner. So our friend once again piped us into the dinner and then we had a long top table and then round tables for all the guests and we sat down and had something to eat. So for our wedding meal or wedding breakfast as it's known in the UK slash Scotland and they call it a breakfast because it's your first meal as a married couple. It's not a breakfast meal, don't worry. To start, we had a potato and leek soup. And then for our main, we had chicken balmoral, which is a Scottish dish that is essentially chicken stuffed with haggis or veggie haggis. We did have that option. I had veggie haggis at the wedding. And then the entire thing is wrapped in bacon and baked in an oven. And you usually serve it with like mashed potatoes, roast vegetables, and then like a whiskey cream sauce. So it is a very like quintessentially Scottish dish. We both really enjoy eating it. My husband loves haggis. Like I said, I had veggie haggis instead. And we made that an option available to all of our guests who didn't perhaps want to try real haggis. It was kind of one of the only decisions in wedding planning that my husband felt very strongly about. When we went to go for the menu tasting, and he tried it and he, he basically said like, I have to insist that we serve this at our wedding because this is so good. I cannot deprive the other Scottish people that are coming of the opportunity to eat this. <laughs> For dessert, one of the ways that we actually cost saved at the wedding was that we served our cake as our dessert instead of having 
it separately later on in the day. During dinner was the only time we had something quote unquote go wrong at the wedding in that we had a minor medical situation where uh, one of the guests fainted. Luckily for us, one of my very good friends who I had invited to the wedding is a medical general practitioner doctor here in the UK. So she was able to step in, assess the situation, and luckily they came too and they are okay. And so it was really great that she was able to handle that instead of us having to call the ambulance because we were, we were in the middle of nowhere so it would have taken a while to get there. It was very strange to have something like that happen and like I said, the person ended up being fine, but we didn't exactly know that they were entirely going to be fine at the wedding because they would have obviously had to go to their doctor and we didn't end up sending this person to the hospital. But then we had to go on with the rest of our day, not exactly acting like nothing happened, but it kind of, you didn't expect it to happen. So you didn't plan it into your day. So you don't really know how to handle it. So it was a bit weird, but it all ended up being fine. After dinner, we went into the drawing room where we got married once again for our speeches. I did ask them to kind of like arrange things so that there were options for people to sit. And my husband and I got to sit on a couch like right kind of at the front of the room uh, because I hate standing. I like to sit and I didn't want to stand through all of the speeches. We only had four speeches, which is a lot of speeches for a Scottish wedding, but probably not a lot for a Canadian wedding. I think it was just about the perfect amount. It filled about an hour, which allowed the staff to flip the dining room for dancing and kept us all occupied in the meantime. So my dad gave a speech, my maid of honor gave a speech, my husband and I gave a speech together, and then we ended with the best man speech. The first three were all very sentimental with lots of having to look up at the ceiling to avoid bursting out into tears. And the uh, best man speech was the perfect way to carry the night into the more relaxed portion of the evening. And this is because in certainly in Scotland. It is essentially a mix between a roast and a comedy routine. It's not really meant to be super sentimental. Um, my husband's best man did probably the best best man speech that I've ever heard. I'm definitely biased on that. He had the groom in absolute stitches. Once we finished the speeches, we left the room and had a little bit of a space before the dancing started for tea, coffee, and Timbits. Yes, I am that Canadian person. I got in touch with Tim Hortons UK on their Facebook a couple weeks before the wedding and kind of outlined that I would like to have Timbits at my wedding and I was aware that I would have to pre-order them to avoid having to like go into a Tim Hortons and buy their entire stock the day of. They were really great with accommodating that so I ended up ordering about 150 Timbits. <laughs> Luckily one of our friends lives li really close to a Tim Hortons in Scotland so on the morning of the wedding he went and picked them up and then brought them and then we had them out for our tea and coffee so that was a really great way to include Canada in all of the Scottishness. But it's not the last Canadian thing or even the first Canadian thing that I included on the day. So our evening reception started with a Kaylee, which is a traditional type of Scottish dance, I guess. You basically have a caller up at the front who calls the steps out to everybody and then it's usually like a partner dance and it just guides people through various dances. And we've been to several Kayleys in Scotland. We, we like going to them, um, they're really great. So we really wanted to have that as a part of our wedding. It's also, again, another good way to get people up and dancing and socializing a bit. So we had for our first dance, a Kaylee dance that's called the Grand March. After that, I did a father-daughter dance with my dad to the song Love Shack by the B-52s because it is our family anthem. I have a really cute video here that I'm going to insert that my brother took uh, during the dancing because I started with my dad and then I had my mom come in and then I got my brother in and then everybody joined in at the end again. After this point, the Kaylee continued going on. Uh, my dress, while not, you know, too big to go through doorways, was big enough to essentially be a trip hazard. And, and Kaylee dancing itself is already a bit of a trip hazard anyway. So at this point, I decided to go up and change into my evening dress, which I bought for 50 pounds off of House of Fraser. It's by Biba. 
it was probably one of the best purchases I made. I think my mom actually liked that dress more than my actual wedding dress, but it made it a lot easier to dance in. Eventually, the band took a break in their music and we started at this point what's known as the disco. That's what they call it over here, but it's like the modern music segment of the reception. So we had decided not to spend money on getting a DJ at, because our Kaylee band had the capacity with a laptop for to play music through speakers for us. So instead I had curated a Spotify playlist. We hooked up the Spotify at that point and started playing the other music. At around 9 p.m. we had another Canadian treat, which was poutine, which is one of my favorite meals of all time. For those of you who don't know, it's chips, French slash French fries, cheese curds, and gravy. I'm very happy that our caterer was able to accommodate me and having that for my our evening treat like snack. My husband, who also loves poutine, didn't actually get any at the wedding because he was too busy outside of the fire pits talking to all of his friends who he hasn't seen in ages because of COVID. So he missed out on having the poutine, unluckily for him. I definitely made sure that I had a box and I was very happy with it. The wedding ended at midnight and so at around 11.45 we had the Kaylee band come back and we finished with two Kaylee dances. So the first one was the Arcadian Strip the Willow, which is a good shout and a great way to really round everybody up for the end of the night. And then the final dance was Old Lang Syne. So my husband and I stood in the middle and kind of like did the eighth grade slow dance around. And then everyone is, was in a circle around us and we were all singing the song and dancing together. And it, it was a really fantastic way to end the night. At midnight, everyone had to start leaving. It took until about 12.30 for everyone to, to actually go home, but that was fine. Everyone who was then staying in the castle went into the library for a bit of a nightcap. And then at 1 a.m. we all went up to our bedrooms because the first floor of the castle needed to be alarmed. So there were a couple people that continued partying in the like kind of little lounge that they have as a part of the bedrooms until the wee hours of the morning. But I definitely at that point was like, I need to go to bed. <laughs> and I got to sleep in my beautiful four poster bed. I did not have a great sleep again, I think because I just had too much adrenaline from the whole day happening. I wasn't actually really drunk at all either, but it was actually really nice to not be that drunk at the end of the night because it meant that I A, didn't have to like vomit or have any kind of like drunk unpleasantness, but also it meant that I have a really clear memory of how the night went and all my favorite parts. So that was really nice. The next morning I woke up a little bit early and I went out and picked up some of our guests who were staying nearby and brought them back to the castle. And then with everyone else that was staying with us, we had a nice Scottish breakfast, actual breakfast this time, all together the morning after. So we could all kind of like get together, talk about our favorite parts of the day. And then at about noon, we had everything packed up and we left the castle and went on to live our lives. It was over faster than I expected it to be. It was a really weird to have planned something for so long, have it happen, and then it's over and you can't go back and you can't change anything about it. Still like a very surreal feeling that it's over and it's not happening again. I like the wedding blues are kind of like a real thing definitely, especially when you had as, as great of a time as we did at our wedding. I will say as well that my wedding coordinator called me the most organized bride that she'd ever had in her career. So I'm quite chuffed about that and everyone that we've spoken to since the wedding said that they had a really great time the venue was absolutely fantastic blew so many people away and i've been talking to everybody since the wedding and kind of trying to find out what their favorite moments are from the day and it's been really nice to kind of get that perspective from everyone else because obviously i have i know what my favorite moments are but i wasn't there for everything for everyone so it was really nice to see all the different aspects of what went on it was definitely worth the money that we spent on it which I will talk about in another video in a little bit more detail. And I'm really grateful that we were able to kind of, you know, just slide it in under the line because, you know, COVID was still something that was happening at this point in time. There was quite a few weather issues as well that actually ended up in forcing a couple guests that were planning on being there having to cancel last minute. So that's kind of 
how my wedding day went. <laughs> As I said, I've got a couple other videos planned for talking about my wedding in a bit more detail. So one of those will be uh, on ways that we saved money at our wedding and a bit more about our budget for it and how we managed that process. As well, I want to make something about how I've tried to DIY preserve my wedding bouquet and our wedding cards as well to make myself a little bit of memorabilia for the day. Another one that I have planned is just handing out a little bit of tips and tricks that I feel would be useful for any future brides planning their wedding or anybody that's thinking of planning their wedding in Scotland or a Scottish castle. So stay tuned for more. As usual, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to see more from me. If you go over to my Instagram, I have quite a few wedding photos on that in addition to what I've shown you today. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, make sure you leave a comment below and please subscribe to help show your support for my channel. Thanks everybody for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!